Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, on this blessed Sunday, make us worthy to praise your resurrection with pure hearts and clear consciences. With all the children of the of the, your holy church, we glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. be with the church and her children. Praise, glory, honor, and praise to the good and merciful Lord, who in his compassion came down to us and became flesh. He chose to taste death to save us, and he descended to the realm of the dead. By his resurrection he gave joy to his disciples and gave light to all the nations with the light of his salvation. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Word of God, who can adequately praise you for the depth of your compassion and what voice can bless you, for you are above all praise. Neither mind nor tongue can describe the wonders you accomplished on Sunday, the day of your resurrection from the dead. And so with the psalmist David we cry out, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Now, O Christ, our God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense which we offer to you to forgive our sins, give peace of mind to those in distress, and comfort to those who are anxious. Bring back those who are far and watch over those who are near. Guide the shepherds, sanctify the priests, and purify the deacons. Pardon all sinners and guard the righteous. Protect orphans and help widows. Drive away all conflicts and put an end to dissension. Remember the faithful departed and grant them rest in your heavenly kingdom, that with them we may celebrate that eternal feast. We raise glory to you, to your blessed Father, and to your living Holy Spirit forever.
O Lord, accept the sweet fragrance of our incense and make us worthy to announce your resurrection with the angels, to proclaim it with your women disciples, and to rejoice in it with your pure apostles. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Kodishat, with joy from the mountains. Sunday is a fee so great. Offer praise to the Lord God and with angels celebrate. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, for you yourselves know that our reception among you was not without effect. Rather, after we had suffered and been insolently treated, as you know in Philippi, we drew courage through our God to speak to you, the gospel of God which mu with much struggle. Our exhortation was not from delusion or impure motives, nor did it work through deception. But as we were judged worthy by God to be entrusted with the gospel, that is how we speak, not as trying to please human beings, but rather God, who judges our hearts. Nor, indeed, did we ever appear with flattering speech, as you know, or with a pretext for greed. <coughs> God is witness. Nor did we seek praise from human beings, either from you or from others, although we were able to impose our weight as apostles of Christ. Rather, we were gentle among you, as a nursing mother cares for her children, which mu with much affection for you. We were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved had you become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working day and night in order to not burden any of you, we proclaim to you the gospel of God. 
You are witnesses, and so is God. How devoutly and just and blamelessly we have behaved toward believers. As you know, we treated each of you, each one of you, as a father treats his children, exhorting and encouraging you and insisting that you conduct yourselves as worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly, that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you receive not a human word, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is now at work in all you who believe. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Hallelujah. to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. We burn this incense to the other song. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. <clears throat> From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, As they continued their journey, Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with, with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do all the serving? Tell her to help me. And the Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things, but there is need of only one thing, and Mary has chosen this better part, and it shall not be taken away from her. This is the truth, peace be with you. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary, and Mary has chosen the better portion, which shall not be taken away from her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This chapter 10 of St. Luke has this charming little story. We all recognize it. You just think about being at the holidays and the, what you're cooking in the afternoon didn't work well and your daughter should be helping you. Instead, she's out talking to her uncle and it's like, will you get in here and help me? No. 
And this is very much an episode that we all recognize. But of course, what's funny about this section 10 in St. Luke is that this is a little domestic story being told to us, it actually in the midst of a lot of lessons that are being given. The context then tells us that there's something more going on here. This is not just simply a, a family's meal. Of course, this is Martha and Mary. And historically, these are the women, it doesn't say explicitly in this specific text, but these are the sisters of Lazarus who will be the resurrection of our Lord that will be the nail in the coffin when they actually decide to imprison him and execute him. Lazarus is not spoken of in this episode, it's these two women. But the context of the story which is here is important because the section before in this chapter 10 of St. Luke, the section before is the famous parable of the Good Samaritan, which is also something unique to St. Luke. That parable doesn't exist in any of the three other gospels, only in St. Luke. We know it well. Then we have this episode of our Lord appearing here. And then after this, at the beginning, because this is the end of chapter 10, at the beginning of chapter 11, the apostles come to our Lord and they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. As John taught his disciples, John the Baptist, as John taught his disciples. And that's when our Lord famously says, when you pray, you will say, our Father who art in heaven. So it's where he teaches the Lord's Prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer. Then immediately after that, he talks about the perseverance in prayer. And he uses a parable of a man who has a friend, whose friend comes to him in the middle of the night, wanting some bread, because he himself has guests now, and now he's coming over and he's pounding on your door because he's run short of supplies for his own kitchen. And it's the middle of the night, so this man's in bed, his family's in bed, the door is shut, it's barred, locked, everything, and he's pounding on the door. And the man from the inside just basically shouts out to him, look, we're all in bed, just do with what you have. And the man keeps pounding, pounding on the door. And our Lord says if he doesn't get up because of friendship, he'll be get up because the man is being impertinent. He's pounding away and he's insisting. And in that importunity, you're, he's going to get up and help him. And our Lord says, it must be the same with you. You must pray and you must pray and you must pray. And when you're done with that, you must pray again. And he uses this parable, that's where you have the famous ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be open to you. That text we know pretty well, but that's its context. It's not our Lord as I'm a big wish tree and I'll give you whatever you want. It's in the context of saying, you must continue to pray and to ask. Because the very act of asking and praying is itself a lesson. We learn Ourselves, God pounding on the door of heaven, so to speak, doesn't do anything for God. God knows exactly what we need. And he knows exactly what we do not need either. And that's part of what we learn in our lessons, is that the things that I think are so indispensable to my life, and I ask for them and I ask for them, some people get PO'd. Oh, well, you know, there's no God in any case, who cares? You know, my life, this, this, and this, this happened, that happened, this happened, this happened, and this happened, so there's no God. Oh, and also, my parents were idiots, all right? We, we've all heard this. There's no God because my father was a jerk. Where is the logical connection between that? This is why our Lord gives a parable and the insistence on why we pray. We pray because we're learning exactly what we need in our lives, not because we're telling God anything. Prayer is about us. It's directed to God. It's the elevation of the heart and the mind to God. But it's about what we learn, not what God gets out of it. We have that beautiful thing in the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom when we say that your majesty is not increased by our praise. Now, we praise God because it benefits us 
to recognize the origin of all existence. This is why we're here every Sunday. Because week by week, it makes us different people to be present at the mysteries. Not because it does anything for God, and God's not some great egoist in the sky that demands praise and laud because he's just lonely or something. That's ridiculous. Totally anthropomorphic idea of God. The praise that he demands is because it benefits us to recognize that there's something else in my life other than me. And that's a huge lesson that all of us have to learn. And that's part of the maturity as we go through life and we deepen in wisdom and this union with our Lord, or at least we're supposed to. I know that in Arizona and Florida, there's a whole group of people in their 80s who run around pretending they're 22. They haven't matured. They're goofballs. All right? There's no other way you can say it. And it's not respectable. I mean, come on. It's beautiful that she has great-grandchildren. It's beautiful that she has a beautiful family. But that she run around like a 22-year-old bimbo in tennis shorts and that, I mean, come on. There should be the esteem and the veneration of a woman whose life has been well-lived, of maturity and wisdom. And I always say this from experience when I used to visit my grandparents in Phoenix, Arizona. And I watched them all coming in their tennis outfits, coming into the restaurant where we were having dinner. And it's like, really? Oh my. <laughs> so let's go back to Martha and Mary. So why this little domestic story that comes in that's so tiny? So in between all of these lessons, it just that's why the gospel begins today, and our Lord went from there and passing on, he came to the house of a woman named Martha. Well, what the story is, of course, telling us, and what it's classically become, is that Martha and Mary become paradigms. They are exemplars of a life of activity and service to the Lord, because Martha's serving our Lord, he's waiting on him. You know, she's preparing supper for everyone here. And so Martha, she's a good woman. She's not a, she, she, both of these women are good, but they're doing different things. And Mary has become the exemplar, often identified with Mary Magdalene being the same woman. But Mary has chosen something different serving our Lord, which is to hear what he has to say. So all of a sudden now we understand a bit better the context of about praying and asking and asking and asking. Because in asking, we should be listening, right? This is classic within families, right? We argue, we get our points across, but we never resolve anything because we're not listening. We don't hear the other person. The marriages that last, last not because they, they live in some kind of fantasy world. They last because they know how to listen to each other in those arguments which are inevitable in human life. And so what our Lord is saying here when Martha comes in and he says, Martha, you can imagine probably even a small smile on our Lord. And Martha comes in with her apron on and flour all over her hands and this kind of exasperation of, can't you see how busy we are? Now it's not nothing to do with you, Lord. But my sister is just sitting there on the floor next to you, listening to everything you have to say. Can't you ask her to help me? Notice she doesn't walk into the room and say, Mary, will you get over here right now? Because we're this, this isn't going well. She goes through our Lord. Because she also understands that Mary is attached to what she is hearing from this rabbi of Galilee. And so if the rabbi says, well, Mary, help your sister, then she'll do it. But if I just go tell Mary this, Mary's going to be like, psst, psst, get out of here. How often does he visit us? I'm listening. This is awesome. So we don't have any of that exchange. She goes, she goes through our Lord. And so the two have become exemplars of the active life in service of the gospel and the contemplative life in the service of the gospel. St. Gregory the Great is one of the first ones to lay this out, to make them as a paradigm and an example by gospel lessons. But of course, in this context of prayer and the Lord's Prayer and the Good Samaritan also, remember the Good Samaritan that I've explained to you is not about social activism. The parable of the Good Samaritan is about the work of redemption. The Good Samaritan is the Messiah who picks up and redeems and saves Adam who's been left half dead on the side of the road. That the Old Testament, the priest, the Levite would not, could not save. 
And when, when he finishes, he says to the man who's been asking him the questions about what is the supreme law of the gospel. Remember, after they go through this whole question of who shows compassion, his answer to this young lawyer, to this lawyer, just simply is, you go and do likewise. Imitate the work of redemption. Imitate the intervention of God in creation. You can't do it by imitation of duplication, but you can walk in the footsteps to show that compassion. But the compassion comes from the motivation of healing. And then, of course, with these prayers. So Mary then, when we understand it, Mary has already come to the point of appreciating what the word is that she's listening. That for the rest of us in our life of prayer and our participation in the mysteries, we learn to listen. And in listening, we move forward by learning and maturing. And we enter deeper into wisdom. So Mary has already understood that. Martha's doing nothing wrong. But Martha hasn't understood yet that there is a higher reason for life. And it's not just simply domestic courtesy or hospitality. That it's ultimately within doing that domestic work that Martha's doing, she needs to learn that you also have to be able to hear the voice of God in this service. And so that's why when our Lord says, he doesn't talk to Mary. That's what Martha's asking for is, well, talk to my sister. He doesn't talk to Mary. He just smiles at Martha and says, you're anxious about many things. That's understandable. But there's only one thing necessary. And Mary has chosen that better part. And that she will not lose. That will not be taken away from her. So that in this perseverance of prayer, when we go deeper and deeper and deeper into it and we're learning how to listen, we're becoming more like Mary at the feet of our Lord. So sometimes when providence doesn't give us to win the lottery tomorrow, sure, I'd love to win the lottery. Our endowment would be perfect. We'd never have to worry. We could dwindle down to six people here and the place would still be open because we could pay all the bills. But it's never going to happen because that's not the way community works. That's why none of us win the lottery, right? But providence also knows that it's not the best thing to happen in our lives. No matter how well we think that it would really give a boost, he's teaching us. God is always teaching us. And so between the two of these women, both good, both devoted to our Lord, our Lord is saying there is good and there is better. And so Mary has found that better part of hearing and listening and in that, that portion will rest with her for all eternity. It will be never be taken away from her. That's maturity and that is wisdom. And the reason why we bring it up, because of course we have our beloved Sue and Lolo today who will make their profession of faith as they transform, everyone remains Catholic, but they have removed their names from the Roman Catholic Church to have their names inscribed in the Maronite church. They become today Maronites, which is why the table here is lit and everything. So they've gone through a whole year process of requesting this, petitioning this, and all these things used to have to go through Rome. Rome has made it easier in the last 30 years. Now you just have to do it between the bishops themselves. And so you have in the bulletin a kind of serious-sized serious-sized version of the creed that we recite at Mass every day. And these ladies will recite this. Then we have the blessing of some medals that they brought. And then they have their signing they have to do of their petitions and all the rescripts. And then we'll be done. That will take place immediately after the sermon. The reason why I bring it up with the question of maturity is I told these ladies a year ago, two years ago, I said, you know, you're more than welcome. Everyone's welcome to be here. Everyone is welcome to be here, and Catholics are, you know, brothers and sisters. But in listening for the years that they have come, four or five years now, how many? Seven. They've been sitting at the feet of our Lord. They came with certain concepts and ideas when they first came. And in sitting at the feet of the Lord, obviously they move forward. Lolo is choosing as her name Rafka for the great 
woman, religious of the end of the 20th, 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, whose life was completely merry. Blind, migraines, paralyzed. Most people in the world will look at her life and say it was useless. From the age of 50 for the next 30 years of her life, in her mid-40s until the 70, her 70s when she died, those last three decades of her life were nothing but pain and suffering, blindness, paralysis. And they would look at it and say she didn't do anything. She's married. Those things took place because she asked in knocking at the door of the Lord, say, Lord, allow me to understand the depth of your passion. And migraines began immediately, and after that, as the years progressed, she lost her sight. They sent her to a doctor, an American, of course, in Beirut. So he's got to know he's an American. And all he succeeded in doing was actually knocking out her other eyes. So now she was completely blind. And then after that, paralysis set in. But because the religious women around her understood what this was, this lesson of maturity and wisdom and grace, when they established a new convent of the 12 women that went, they made sure that Sister Rafka went with them, though they had to carry her to that convent. She's never going to sweep a floor. She's never going to make a loaf of bread. But she's going to pray. And she's going to sacrifice. And her participation in maturity and wisdom of the gospel is going to mean more to us than Sister Mary Gardenkeeper. And so it's a beautiful thing that she's taken as a tribute of maturity and wisdom to understand the path of Rafka, of Saint Rafka, that she would choose her as her patron saint. And Sue is chosen, you'll see in the bulletin, we put Mary in, in quotations. It's not Mary for the mother of God. It's Mary for Mary of Egypt, the great penitent, the great exemplar of conversion in the desert. Lovely story. Very great saint in the Eastern tradition. So they are both very wise in choosing the patrons that they have chosen today. But we go back to the question when I said, and even when I talked to the chancery and said, these two ladies want to come in, they want to enter the church. And they said, well, they're welcome to come. And I said, no, I've told them that. But they knocked, and they kept knocking, and they've been waiting for months. Because in the end, the response was, well, it's not that we just simply want to be at the Maronite church. We want to be daughters of St. Maron. So today you witness an adoption ceremony. That's what it is. On technicality, it's a rescript of moving names around in baptismal registers. But what it really is is an adoption. And the same way that all of us, sometimes by birth, sometimes by ascription, sometimes by conversion, we are the children of St. Mary. But these women have made it a choice. And their entrance is so that they become part of this 1600 year long tradition of the ascetic monastic tradition of entering into them. So they have chosen the better part. And I would venture to say that from the Lord's point of view, that better portion will never be taken from them. So they are also an example to all of us Maronites who are born so, who take it for granted. Show up at the clubhouse on occasion, and you know, it'll be there. Well, it won't always be there. There are a lot of empty churches in the Middle East, closed down, destroyed over the centuries. And so when we have the example of women who have come over these years to sit at the feet of our Lord, to listen, to hear, and to choose this better portion. It is a marvelous and beautiful example for us all, because it reminds us what it means to be the children of Beit Marun, what it means to be part of this ancient tradition. So that may God give us that ability to persevere in prayer and to understand that in life, which is full of all kinds of anxious and troubling things, that there is only one thing necessary, and when we remain focused on that, that portion is guaranteed never to be taken from us. So Mary has chosen the better portion, and which shall never be taken away from her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, ladies.
So if you want to follow along, it's in the bulletin. The ladies are inside. Every deeper form and every more utter in the 
Now we have a church, wisdom in prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our new Samaritan <coughs> sisters, Mary and Mary. Ushers. Telot madeb heida loho, walwot aloho dam kare tayu. Wainib silva tayu ta okayul al baytof meskudem hayek lo akun
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Mary of Egypt, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the repose of Ferris, Ferris, Lenin, and Bennett the Grinning. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared the spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love that we may raise glory to you, and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives 
that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. God the Father, in the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence, and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. salvation your only begotten son became flesh of the pure virgin mary and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us O Baruch Hu Kadesh Waksu ya beletar mi dao kado mara Saab, saab menne akhul menne khul khul Honu deni tao Fakhuru Lachlo faikun, wachlof sagie, metakaseo meti hem. Hosoyon, haubewa hoyen an alam alamin. Kanno alkoso damzich wo men hamro wo men mayo Baruch wo kadem Yabel talmidao karo mara Sabishta wo mehne kulkho Khono denita Demo dilan dia diki khadato Dachlof aikun, wachlof sagie, et ein shadu meti hand. Chosoyon, haume wo haye dan alam alamin. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. 
and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. You, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin monio, anin monio, anin monio, nite modro ho chayo kadisho. O na chen la inu alu korbono chono. Descent, he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your Holy Church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, with blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Marin, Saint Rafka, Saint Mary of Egypt and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice, calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. And rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have forgiven, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with humility, with purity and holiness, and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. Do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One holy, holy Father, Father, one holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body. 
and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. Lord our God, you be glory forever. is our 
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and for the glory of your holy name, and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name. For we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So we have three announcements. One is to welcome home Situ Virgi 
and her clan. So it's always wonderful to see you each year. The second is a mabruk to Ruth and the ladies' rosary sodality. It was beautiful hearing you say the rosary in full voice this morning. May you be multiple numbers as the months progress. Surely an honor to the Mother of God. Congratulations, it was beautiful. And then lastly, we have, like last week, the petitions at Front Street and downstairs also for the petitions against the um, state paid taxation for abortion and for the assisted suicide for the registered voters who would like to sign the petitions, you're more than welcome. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.